after all these years, Discord still does not have an overlay on Linux. But luckily, the dev community has come in to just fix their problems, like happened in the game scene with all the modders that fixed the Elder Scrolls games. Now, the previous solution that everybody was using was called Discord Overlay Linux, pretty much straight to the point. Problem with this one, the developer doesn't maintain it anymore. He has deprecated it, so his new solution is called Discoverer. This is based on GTK3. It's incredibly lightweight and has quite a bit of customization. So let's go and open it up and see how it actually looks. Now, I already set myself up in a Discord channel, so there we go. It takes just a moment to open up, and... It's also going to take a moment to start detecting the voice. Now it's good to go. The initial launch takes a couple of seconds, but after that point, everything is working basically as you'd expect it to. So if I stop talking for a moment, basically gets rid of the rings, and it works like the Discord overlay would be expected to work. Now keep in mind, this only works inside of a Discord voice channel and not inside of a Discord call. At least I haven't found a way to make it detect when I'm actually inside of a call. I don't know if that's how the Windows overlay works as well, but this is how this one is going to work. Now, you might be wondering about how this actually functions, because Discord has a lot of weird TOS stuff when it comes to running third-party clients and things like that. The way it basically works is it takes the official Discord OBS plugin called Discord Stream Kit, which is used for showing things like your Discord chat and other Discordy features inside of OBS, and then rather than showing that inside of OBS, or I guess XSplit, but nobody uses XSplit, it shows that information on a GTK3 window. Is this using the plugin in a way that wasn't exactly intended? Yes. Do I think it's ultimately going to be a problem? I don't think so, but Discord moderation does things fairly randomly. I doubt there is any way for the plugin to distinguish between an OBS window and any other sort of window it might be running in. One thing to point out is currently I'm running this without a compositor. Normally I would have blur and things enabled, but there's a very good reason why I don't. Basically this happens, and the system becomes completely unusable. The reason for this is because I'm just setting blur to run for every single transparent window or translucent, whatever you want to say, that means that even this window is going to be blurred. Now, if you're not using blur and you are just using transparency, there isn't going to be any issue whatsoever. The other way you can get around this is in your compositor, there's likely a way to exclude certain applications from the blur effect. This is going to depend on the compositor you're actually using and is outside of the scope of this video. For now, though, we'll just keep it like this. So by default, if you have a system tray, it will add an icon into that system tray to open up the settings. If you don't have a system tray, that can still be opened up by going into your terminal, running discoverer-overlay, dash dash configure, and it'll open up the exact same window. Now you don't have hundreds of things to mess with, but everything you need is gonna be here. And this is one of the benefits of basing it on StreamKit, because StreamKit is designed to be integrated into a live stream, a lot of people will have other elements already on their stream and want their overlay to actually fit the rest of that. So you got to have this configuration to make that actually make sense. I'm not going to go through every single setting. We'll just go through most of the notable ones. So by default, the font I believe is set to your default sans font or sans font, whatever you want to call it. I've set mine to JetBrains Mono Bold because I use JetBrains Mono for the rest of my system. Now, idle background color and talking background color is basically the color of these boxes around the name. These are set to transparent by default. I don't know why it's transparent and not black because even when you have your compositor running, the color is black. It's just running as a translucent black. So, basically, I don't like touching these, because I feel like that is a bit too much distraction coming from the side of my screen. But if I go and change the, let's say we'll change the talking color, so let's change this one to, I don't know, red, for example. So now, as I'm talking, the color is red. When I stop talking, the color goes back to black. I like having the green rings, that is about as much distraction as I'm willing to deal with. 
Now, the text color and the talking text color, unlike the previous ones, actually are given a color. So if we actually set this to transparent, now we won't actually see the text. So when I'm not talking, now it's just completely gone. It is a bit weird that the settings work differently like that. If you're going to make transparent be black here, why is transparent not white here? I'm not entirely sure, but that's just how it's going to be. The one setting I care about here is the border color. Green is fine, but there are plenty of other colors you might want to have if maybe, I don't know, you put this on a green screen and you want to actually chroma key it out to put it on some other location. Now, the location of the overlay is something you have complete control over and by default is going to be anchored to the right-hand side of one of your monitors. I say one of because it depends on the placement of the ports on your GPU and the order that your monitors are actually plugged in. In my case, it's the right-hand side of my main monitor. So we can go and place it on the left-hand side. We can have it be in the top, in the bottom, and this might seem fairly limited, but we also have the option of clicking on floating. Now, making it floating isn't really going to do much. In my case, it disappeared. I'm not entirely sure why, but if we... up. Oh, there we go. It's moved to where I had it be floating. It just took a bit of time to actually reload. If we go and click on place window, now we can go and select exactly where we want to go and place it. Let's say I want it like down here, for example. Now, one thing you can't do in floating mode is change the order of the text and the image. So if you want to have the image be on the left hand side instead, go over to the anchor mode, click on the left hand side, then go back to floating, and now you can go and place it like you want to place it. I kind of wish there was a setting inside of this mode to do that, but it is what it is. One thing to keep in mind is when you're moving the chat around, sometimes it may break for a moment. So if I go from floating to anchor, sometimes the text is just going to black out for a bit, and it's just going to sometimes stay there for a reasonable amount of time. If you want to get rid of that, either wait and it'll usually reload itself, or just go and swap back to the other setting and it will be reloaded. Also, when it comes to placement, we don't need to see the names. So clicking on display icon only is going to hide those. Another way to hide the names is displaying the icons horizontally. So even going and getting rid of this setting, those names aren't going to be shown there. I kind of wish that in horizontal mode, you could actually see the names. But when you're in horizontal mode, it actually changes where you can anchor to as well. So now we have bottom and top in the top selector, I guess, rather than being in the second one. You also have things like icon spacing, text padding, location padding, things like that. Settings you'd basically expect to be there in any sort of application like this. One other thing we can do, though, is not just showing an overlay of the people in the voice channel, showing an overlay of a text channel. So if I go and enable this now, we actually can see what is going on in one of these channels. Like with the voice chat overlay, we can go and change the location of this one as well, clicking on place window, and then let's say we want to put it over here. Unlike that one though, we don't have the ability to actually anchor it somewhere. Another thing is unlike the voice channel, with the text channel, if you want to show this, you need to go and manually select the channel. So right now I'm pulling from the general channel in my testing server. So if I go and send a message there, this is a video message and I'm covering it with my water bottle so I can't actually see what I've typed. Hey, I got it right. As we can see, now it showed up on our screen. And lastly, you need to work out what mode you're actually going to run the text chat in. So there's pop-up style and I guess persistent style. So pop-up style basically treats it like a notification. So this is a message and the chat will only be shown when a message is actually shown. The other style that I had open before, this will make it so this stays on the screen the entire time. Also, I guess if you don't want to show attachments and just show the text chat, go and click on show attachments and those will no longer be visible. Maybe if I was doing a live stream, I wanted to embed my Discord stream chat onto my stream. That I guess would be a use for this one, but for general usage, I wouldn't ever show my text chat like this. The voice chat overlay, on the other hand, that actually is kind of useful. Right now, if you want to make use of this, I'll leave a link to the GitHub down below. There is also a package on the AUR 
on the Fedora repos and also the Gentoo repos. Back when I was on Windows, I wasn't really a big fan of making use of the Discord overlay, but I can totally understand why it's useful and more so in a stream context than in daily use. But if you are heavily making use of voice channels with people you don't really recognize, then yeah, I can totally see why it's useful to know exactly who is talking. I mentioned at the start, the dev has joined the camp of the Bash Top developer, and I do know that he's planning to work on a Rust and Vulcan rewrite of this. So maybe in six months, you'll get another video on this topic.